Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again and welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. Uh, again with our special guest, John Mariani, the virtual gourmet, and uh, uh, my partner, John Coleman. Hey, Coleman, how you doing? Having to see you in, in a month of hours. John, good to see you. Always wonderful to be back on. Always wonderful to be anywhere these days. <laughs> well, I uh, we were out to dinner the other night, and uh, I ordered, uh, I can't remember what it was, it was bolognese. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, I wondered, it, it, obviously from Bologna, right? Mm -hmm. Sauce from Bologna, mm -hmm. as opposed to milanese. Mm -hmm. So... Is uh, is this an is this a real Bologna authentic Bologna bol, bolin, <laughs> say Bolognese one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you can you say jalapeno? Say no. jalapeno. Jalapeno. No jalapeno. Okay, Bologna. Jalapeno. Yes, I can. Bolognese. Yeah, Bolognese is really from. Bologna. London Broil is not from London and Dover Soul is not from Dover, but Bolognese is from Bologna. Bologna. Bolognese. Very good. So what, is, what, what, what is, it? is it? What is it? It is a sauce which is misinterpreted as being a meat and tomato sauce in America. Um, not so much by, uh, by deliberation as to when it got here. Uh, meat and potato sauces, which are called ragouts rather than salsas, were adopted in America to include more meat and more tomatoes and more of everything. But that's not the case in the true bolognese sauce, which is a different kind of, of dish entirely and has very specific flavors, which um, um, I found. I did an article for a magazine called Cucini Italiana, and I flew all the way to Bologna um, and ate it like, I don't know, seven, eight times in a row in different restaurants, at a cooking at a cooking school, at uh, an old uh, uh, grandmother's house. And there were eight completely different versions, all eight differently. This one refused to use pork. This one refused to use lard. This one refused to make anything but 12 layers. And they, they all tasted pretty much the same. You know, uh, just goes to show that uh, the, the, there's no such thing as a bad dish. There's only a bad cook. And all these cooks were really, really wonderful. So what, what's the difference in, in flavor? I mean, I've, the way you described it, that's the only bolognese mm -hmm. <laughs> that I know. And, that's and yet, not to pronounce it. You should eat the real thing. <laughs> It's not easy to find in the United States. As a matter of fact, just yesterday on a Sunday, I was watching that, what is it called, milkweed or something. It's the Christopher Kimball, the guy with a little bow tie and very twee yes. and the little glasses and so forth. And he um, uh, used to be with America's Test Kitchen. But um, what they do is they um, assault a dish from 42 different angles and they do things to it that you would never imagine to come up with their version of the perfect dish of whatever they're making. And I've tried some of the recipes and some of them don't work out, some of them work out just fine, but they're very time consuming and you have to be so anal about them. And in the end, this particular um, uh, bolognese, we can get lasagna bolognese in a minute, but this particular bolognese sauce bore scant resemblance to what a bolognese sauce should be and taste like. It was appalling. So, so is the American version of bolognese, bolognese uh, is the American version, uh, in your opinion, the, the gourmet, is it not hold up to the Italian original? Um, that's one way of putting it, putting it, because the Italian original is so original, and I'll, I'll go into why, but um, I have no problem with a really good, rich meat sauce, um, which... Here they often call bolognese, which but it but it isn't. That's more of a, of a rich, good tomato and meat sauce. Okay, so here's the distinction. Here's how you make a basic bolognese sauce. You start off with two or three different kinds of meat: pork, veal, and uh, beef. Okay, you sauté them, get them a little brown, take them out. You put in the holy trinity, 
which is called, which is a celery, onion, and carrot. And you saute those to build up the flavor. Okay, put the meat meat in, and then cover it with a little bit of um, uh, some uh, beef broth, and start to boil it down. Start to boil it down, and then you put in milk, or some real devils would put in heavy cream uh, or creme fraiche. But you pour in milk, and that's one of the distinctions: is that the uh, bolognese they made on the TV show yesterday, and the bolognese you find in your average Italian restaurant in America, does not use milk in the recipe. This really enriches it, makes it velvety, and makes it delicious. Then another, it's not a secret ingredient, but everybody uses, is to grate nutmeg into the sauce. This is very important. This gives a very specific sauce. And the tomatoes, but where you will find the average uh, American bolognese sauce has like a couple of a couple of cups, you know, like a, a half quart of a, 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 a tomatoes. Um, no, that's not true. If your bolognese, your authentic bolognese, comes out looking very red, you put in way too much tomato. It's supposed to come out kind of an orange color, um, with pronounced. You could see the meat. And um, that's what a true bolognese is. And then when you put it on, mix it with the pasta, put on some Parmigiano cheese, and um, it's absolutely stunningly delicious in its own way. But it's not just a tomato meat sauce. You know, uh -huh. um, uh, you're, uh -huh. uh, uh, on uh, uh, johnmariani.com, you have a whole bunch of books. Are any of them cookbooks? Any of them uh, uh, recipe books that would include what you've just done? Or... Do people just have to go back and now repeat this over and over and over again until they write down uh, all the instructions? Well, um, you could go to, frankly, you could go to uh, my website, johnmariani.com, and go to the article on Bollier's, and it tells you there. It doesn't give you a specific recipe as to cups and teaspoons and so forth, but uh, you can take that and use a, an Italian cookbook by an Italian and most specifically, somebody who is a cook from Bologna, all right? And in that case, if it's a, it's a, it's a cookbook of Italia, of Bolognese recipes, of which there are many more, um, uh, just aside from that, including, and we'll get to it, is a lasagna alla Bolognese, um, that would be much more dependable than getting an Italian cookbook written by a Sicilian or a Roman or, a, or, or God forbid, a Tuscan, who do not know from Bolognese. <laughs> so, All right, now let's get to the let's yeah. get to the important stuff. Yeah, I mean it's not like the ingredients are difficult to get. You don't have to go out to, to a specialty shop to buy any of this. Mm. I want to say the magic word lasagna. Lasagna. Okay, now lasagna is uh, it's a very old wor word. Uh, it goes back to Roman times, but it basically refers to strips of pasta, sheets of pasta, rather than you know thinly cut uh, spaghetti, tagliatelle, that sort of thing. Um, so lasagna is known in the South, and lasagna in the South, Neapolitan style, Sorrentino style, is a wonderful dish. And that's when you take these strips of the, of the noodles and you put on the ricotta and some Parmigiano cheese and some mozzarella and some tomato sauce in layers. And it's delicious. And you put it under the, 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 the broiler and you, you crisp up the top. It's an absolutely delicious uh, lasagna, which is what you're going to find 99% of the time in America. A lasagna alla bolognese, sometimes with the word verde, which means green, because they often make it with spinach noodles, is something different because it does not use ricotta and it does not use mozzarella. So what you're basically uh, eating is this um, wonderful sauce, on these layers with the addition of a bechamel or a bechamel sauce. And a bechamel sauce is basically a, 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 a milk sauce that is uh, thickened a little bit with um, a flour and uh, butter. So it becomes like a very, very liquid whipped cream. Okay, and it's delicious on a, on a number of dishes. So you take the noodle, you put the uh, bolognese sauce I described, and you'll see all the vegetables and the carrots and so forth in there. And then you put the bechamel on top of that. Another layer, another layer of sauce, another layer of bechamel, and you do as many as you want. Most people do three, four, five. One of the women um, 
this curmudgeonly old uh, nonna did 12 layers of the thinnest possible pasta you can imagine. I mean, you could hold it up and see the cathedral steeple through it uh, in her window. And she made 12, dodici, was 12 in Italian. And it's in honor of the 12 apostles. And so to her, it was a holy and religious thing. And it, it was absolutely just stunning, stunning, because all of those, those layers were so thin and they crisped up and you got that crunchiness on top. Mm -hmm. Fantastico. Well, I am, I am now a, a real fan of Bolognese. I have to tell Anything you, Bolognese. I have, to, I have to tell you, after all this discussion, I think John and I are ready for breakfast. <laughs> well, I'm ready for <laughs> my late lunch here in New York. <laughs> right. Uh, well, this has been wonderful. Uh, what a tasty episode this has been. Thank you. Wouldn't you say, <laughs> Mr. Coleman? Well said. Well said. John, thank you again for being the virtual gourmet and for sharing all this great knowledge with us. My pleasure, as always. Buon appetito. Grazie. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.